October 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapters 38 and 39 from the Old Testament. Now Shephatiah, son of Maton, Gedaliah, son of Pasher, Jehuchal, son of Shalemiah, and Pasher, son of Malchijah, had heard the things that Jeremiah had been telling the people. They had heard him say, The Lord says, those who stay in this city will die in battle, or of starvation, or disease. Those who leave the city and surrender to the Babylonians will live. They will escape with their lives. They had also heard him say, The Lord says, This city will certainly be handed over to the army of the king of Babylon. They will capture it. So these officials said to the king, This man must be put to death. For he is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in the city, as well as all the other people there, by these things he is saying, This man is not seeking to help these people, but is trying to harm them. King Zedekiah said to them, Very well, you can do what you want with him, for I cannot do anything to stop you. So the officials took Jeremiah and put him in the cistern of Malchijah, one of the royal princes, that was in the courtyard of the guardhouse. There was no water in the cistern, only mud. So when they lowered Jeremiah into the cistern with ropes, he sank in the mud. An Ethiopian, Ebed Melech, a court official in the royal palace, heard that Jeremiah had been put in the cistern. While the king was holding court at the Benjamin Gate, Ebed Melech departed the palace and went to speak to the king. He said to him, Your royal majesty, those men have been very wicked in all that they have done to the prophet Jeremiah. They have thrown him into a cistern, and he is sure to die of starvation there, because there is no food left in the city. Then the king gave ebed Melech the Ethiopian the following order, Take thirty men with you from here, and go pull the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he dies. So ebed Melech took the men with him, and went to a room under the treasure room in the palace, he got some worn-out clothes and old rags from there and let them down by ropes to Jeremiah in the cistern. ebed Melech called down to Jeremiah, Put these rags and worn-out clothes under your armpits to pad the ropes. Jeremiah did as ebed Melech instructed. So they pulled Jeremiah up from the cistern with ropes. Jeremiah, however, still remained confined to the courtyard of the guardhouse. Some time later, Zedekiah sent and had Jeremiah brought to him at the third entrance of the Lord's temple. The king said to Jeremiah, I would like to ask you a question. Do not hide anything from me when you answer. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I answer you, you will certainly kill me. If I give you advice, you will not listen to me. So King Zedekiah made a secret promise to Jeremiah and sealed it with an oath. He promised, as surely as the Lord lives, who has given us life and breath, I promise you this. I will not kill you or hand you over to those men who want to kill you. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, The Lord, the God who rules over all, the God of Israel, says, You must surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon. If you do, your life will be spared and this city will not be burned down. Indeed, you and your whole family will be spared. But if you do not surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, this city will be handed over to the Babylonians, and they will burn it down. You yourself will not escape from them. Then King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Judeans who have deserted to the Babylonians. The Babylonians might hand me over to them, and they will torture me. Then Jeremiah answered, you will not be handed over to them. Please obey the Lord by doing what I have been telling you. Then all will go well with you and your life will be spared. But if you refuse to surrender, the Lord has shown me a vision of what will happen. Here is what I saw. All the women who are left in the royal palace of Judah will be led out to the officers of the king of Babylon. They will taunt you, saying, Your trusted friends misled you. They have gotten the best of you. Now that your feet are stuck in the mud, they have turned their backs on you. All your wives and your children will be turned over to the Babylonians. 
You yourself will not escape from them, but will be captured by the king of Babylon. The city will be burned down. Then Zedekiah told Jeremiah, Do not let anyone know about the conversation we have had. If you do, you will die. The officials may hear that I have talked with you. They may come to you and say, Tell us what you said to the king and what the king said to you. Do not hide anything from us. If you do, we will kill you. If they do this, tell them, I was pleading with the king not to send me back to die in the dungeon of Jonathan's house. All the officials did indeed come and question Jeremiah. He told them exactly what the king had instructed him to say. They stopped questioning him any further because no one had actually heard their conversation. So Jeremiah remained confined in the courtyard of the guardhouse until the day Jerusalem was captured. The following events occurred when Jerusalem was captured. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came against Jerusalem with his whole army and laid siege to it. The siege began in the tenth month of the ninth year that Zedekiah ruled over Judah. It lasted until the ninth day of the fourth month of Zedekiah's eleventh year. On that day they broke through the city walls. Then Nergal Shaizer of Samgar, Nebau Sarzakim, who was a chief officer, Nergal Shaizer, who was a high official, and all the other officers of the king of Babylon, came and set up quarters in the middle gate. When King Zedekiah of Judah and all his soldiers saw them, they tried to escape. They departed from the city during the night. They took a path through the king's garden and passed out through the gate between the two walls. Then they headed for the Jordan Valley, but the Babylonian army chased after them. They caught up with Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho and captured him. They took him to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon at Riblah in the territory of Hamath, and Nebuchadnezzar passed sentence on him there. There at Riblah, the king of Babylon had Zedekiah's sons put to death, while Zedekiah was forced to watch. The king of Babylon also had all the nobles of Judah put to death. Then he had Zedekiah's eyes put out and had him bound in chains to be led off to Babylon. The Babylonians burned down the royal palace, the temple of the Lord, and the people's homes, and they tore down the wall of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard, took captive the rest of the people who were left in the city. He carried them off to Babylon along with the people who had deserted to him. But he left behind in the land of Judah some of the poor people who owned nothing. He gave them fields and vineyards at that time. Now King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had issued orders concerning Jeremiah. He had passed them on through Nebuzaradan, the captain of his royal guard. Find Jeremiah and look out for him. Do not do anything to harm him. But do with him whatever he tells you. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard, Nebuchadnezzar, who was a chief officer, Nergalshaizer, who was a high official, and all the other officers of the king of Babylon sent and had Jeremiah brought from the courtyard of the guard house. They turned him over to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, and the grandson of Shaphan, to take him home with him. But Jeremiah stayed among the people. Now the Lord had spoken to Jeremiah while he was still confined in the courtyard of the guardhouse. Go and tell ebed melech the Ethiopian, the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, I will carry out against this city what I promised. It will mean disaster and not good fortune for it. When that disaster happens, you will be there to see it. But I will rescue you when it happens. I, the Lord, affirm it. You will not be handed over to those whom you fear. I will certainly save you. You will not fall victim to violence. You will escape with your life because you trust in me. I, the Lord, affirm it. God, I really uh, struggle with people who only believe in the Old Testament or people who only believe in the New Testament. It's stories like this with... Uh, Jeremiah as well as the Ethiopian Ebed Melech that speak volumes about our relationship with you. Uh, here you have your people, um, Israel, Jewish people, 
And then you have this amazing story of compassion and generosity and bravery from one of the king's main servants, Ebed Melek, and he was Ethiopian, um, which meant he was a Gentile. He wasn't Jewish and he loved you so much and he knew who Jeremiah was and how important he was to the situation and what was happening to him. He couldn't just stand by and let it happen. So he braved his own life to go before the king and say, "Ah, you can't let this happen to Jeremiah. So can you imagine Here's a king. He's already incredibly agitated with all the war situation. He's already agitated because he's been told that if he stays, his life and the life of his family is in danger. And if he, if he goes with the Babylonians, he's going to be in captive, in captivity uh, for a very long time, and he will die in captivity. Um, not some of the best choices, right? So he's already agitated. We know for the most part, kings back then had huge egos, and you just didn't talk to them that way. And Here Ebed-Melech comes to him and says, King, you can't do this. Holy cow, can you imagine how brave Ebed was in the face of everything to go and stand up for Jeremiah? And it was awesome to watch you move uh, uh, Zedekiah's heart to say, I can't really do anything. Uh, You go figure this out. We totally know the king could have done something. He could have stopped those people from... um, putting uh, Jeremiah down in that cistern, uh, but he didn't. And so he's like, fine, fine, do whatever you want. Possibly because he was so sidetracked by what was going on uh, in the land that he ruled over. So Ebed has been given the authority now to go rescue Jeremiah. And cisterns at that time were, were not just like these straight up and down holes or wells like we usually think of, but they were kind of skinny at the top. Uh, about man cover manhole cover size and then they were quite a bit wider at the bottom so it's not like he could have climbed up the sides or easily pulled him up from from the situation it was going to to be a little bit of of a job and the king even said go and take all these people with you to get jeremiah out of it and was going to be some work so ebed's like no we're not going to just do that and he went Can you imagine his heart at this time? He went and got a bunch of rags and and used clothing, knowing that pulling Jeremiah out of this is going to be painful on Jeremiah. So he could put him underneath his arms when they lifted him up. I mean, just incredibly dripping with compassion, this incredible story of this Gentile who interceded on behalf of Jeremiah at that point. God, it's incredible to me to watch people's hearts Stories of the Old Testament speak to the future of the New Testament. And the New Testament looks back to all the graciousness and uh, power and sovereignty and mercy of the Old Testament. The whole book is so much of who we are today. I I just, I again truly don't understand how, how people can pick and choose one side or the other side. It's the totality of these amazing stories and how they all completely work together. That is so beautiful uh, to read and to watch and to take note of in our own lives. God, I just ask that you allow the compassion that you created inside of me, like you did Ebed, that you allow that compassion to come out and to help other people and not to just help other people in the face of adversity, but to have the strength to stand up to people and in the midst of my own fear and dealing with things, to have this incredible grace to think beyond just the permissions I've been given. Like Zedekiah said, sure, you can go save him. But gosh, let me go save him and let me make it really comfortable for him because he's one of God's prophets. I know there's going to be so many situations in my life where you're going to allow me to help people and I can help people beyond what it is that you're just showing me because of your strength and your compassion. God, allow me to take full advantage of all those gifts and skills that you've given me to helping other people. I, I hope and, and pray that I'm brave enough in those situations like Ebed was to say the right things, to do the right things beyond any sense of compassion or right or wrong, but only knowing what you expect me to do, God. 
God, thank you for giving me a new heart that does feel compassion. Just help me to use it, God, in all the circumstances that you bring into my life. In your son's name I pray, amen.